Let's first see that what we'll be building. So in our application, we will perform a ray casting operation. And whenever it hits a horizontal surface, we are going to add virtual cubes in our scene. And you can see that when, whenever we are performing this operation, even on the floor or the carpet or on the sofa, uh, it's, it is trying to find that horizontal plane and then allowing us to add virtual objects. Let's go ahead and get started. So now let's go ahead and get started. When we are creating a project in Xcode, make sure that you select Augmented Reality App Project Template because it already comes with all the things that you need to get started. So let's select that. Next. And now the product name. Now you can put the product name anything you want. I'm just gonna say Plane Detection in Reality Kit and make sure that the interface is selected as Swift UI, language is Swift, and the content technology is Reality Kit. You can save anywhere you want. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. That's perfectly fine. And there you go. So this is our project. We haven't really written any line of code or anything. So this is what it looks like, okay? Now, I don't really need most of this stuff. So let's remove these things. I'm going to remove all of this stuff, anchor all of this. There we go. So it becomes much simpler. If you run this right now, it's not really going to display you anything. I mean, you may get like a dialogue on your screen saying, hey, can I have access to the camera? You can say yes. Well, you have to say yes or else nothing is going to work. And then it's just going to show you the camera because we deleted a lot of code over here. It's not really going to show you any AR or virtual object. The most important part is that when you're creating Reality Gate application in Xcode, make sure that you select your iPad or your iPhone. Now I'm going to select my iPad over here. And since it says that my iPad is of lower version, uh, you may not see that message because your iPad will be up to date, hopefully but I can always go back over here and change it to 17. We're not really using any feature that was released in 17.2, so changing it to 17 is perfectly fine. Okay, this is good. We have the iPad connected and everything. The next thing that we want to do is we want to perform a tap. How do we access a tap gesture? If I run this application and tap on the screen, I want to be able to access the tap, like tapping in, clicking, tapping on the screen. And you can do this in multiple ways. One of the ways is by using the AR view. So we already have the AR view, which is an instance of an AR view, which is right here. And what we can do is we can simply use AR view dot add gesture recognizer. Now, if you have been Working with UI Kit, you may already know UI Gesture Recognizers. So it's the same thing. We're going to attach, we're going to attach a gesture recognizer on the AR view because it is a view which is UI responder, meaning it can respond to events. Now, what kind of an event are we looking at? Well, UI Tab Gesture Recognizer. Where are we going to basically handle this event or the event will be delegated to who? In this case, we don't really have anyone who can handle this event. So for that, we have to create something called a coordinator. Now, you might be thinking, why can't we just handle the event inside the AR view container? Well, the problem is that the AR view container is a struct. So we can't really modify this part. Uh, and it's also a good idea to give this responsibility to someone else, like a coordinator. So we are not really writing a lot of code in our AR view container, which is of type UI view representable. Uh, and that is basically making the reality stuff showing in our UI kit application. All right. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and create a coordinator. Now I can create a coordinator in the same file or a different file that's kind of up to you, but I'm just going to go ahead and implement it over here, coordinator. There we go. 
And inside the coordinator, I can go ahead and implement the tapped function. So this is going to be a recognizer. That's just the signature of the tap function. And it's going to be a UI tap gesture recognizer. Okay. And for this coordinator, it should also get access to the view, meaning the AR view. So we're also going to somehow pass the AR view to our coordinator. Now, how do we make sure that this coordinator is available inside the AR view container? Well, just like we have events over here, which is coming from the UI view representable, we have a delegate event or delegate function called make UI view and update UI view. We also have something like make a coordinator. And make a coordinator or make coordinator can return you the coordinator. So we're just going to go ahead and create an instance of the coordinator and simply return it. Whenever you return something from the make coordinator, it is automatically available in the context. So that's pretty good because that's exactly what we wanted to do when we were saying that the target for the gesture recognizer will be something. Well, that something can be context.coordinator. So this means that when you tap on the AR view, those events will be delegated to coordinator. And we can over here say coordinator.tapped. So this will be the event or this will be the function that will be called whenever you're tapping. But we have to use the selector over here because this is kind of like an old school uh, Objective C. So we're going to say coordinator.tapped. Awesome. So this is where now we can, whenever we tap on the AR view on the screen, it is going to be available to us right over here. So this part, part can actually now fire. And you can always check it out by printing a print statement over here and it's going to work. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is inside the tap gesture, we want to get access to where you are tapping. And we also want to say that if you are tapping on a plane, then we want to put a cube over there. So you can think of it, and I'm very bad at drawings. So if you can think of it as multiple things over here. Let's say that these are the two different or multiple different planes over here, right? So this is kind of like a table that you have. And this is kind of like a couch that you have. So if you are tapping and the ray goes over there and it kind of, does, we, we're going to do the ray casting and the ray intersects with this particular furniture, then it tries to find the horizontal space and it is horizontal. So over here, we can put some sort of a cube. That's what we're trying to do. And the same thing is that if we just tap somewhere and it goes and hits the ground, our ray cast hits the ground, then again, it is hitting a horizontal plane. So we can put some sort of a cube over there. Over here, also the same thing. You know, if this is a large table or a sofa and we tap and a ray cast, meaning a ray emit emits from our iPhone, and it or iPad and it hits the actual sofa or the table, then we can actually go ahead and put something over there. So that is exactly what we are trying to do over here, trying to build. All right. Now, before we go into that detail, let's check out the sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by AzamSharp.school. You can go to AzamSharp.school to find the one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos. And you can see that it you will find everything related to iOS. And I'm also hosting a workshop on introduction to reality kit. This will be a live workshop on Zoom. It will be hands on. You will create some amazing projects. So definitely check this workshop out. It is on uh, February 24th. So it's basically coming up. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you check it out. I also provide you the monthly as well as annual subscription. And the monthly as well as annual, they both give you access to 22, actually. Uh, this has actually gone up and more than 130 hours of content. And let's check out some of the courses over here. Core Data Bootcamp. This just got released like last week. Uh, everything you need to know about Core Data, Reactive Programming, Swift Data Bootcamp, MV Pattern, 
full stack iOS development, one of my favorite courses because this is where you learn about how to create the client, but also how to create a server using Vapor in server-side Swift. Uh, server-driven UI, Swift UI fundamentals, uh, you know, machine learning, reality kit, very, very important topics over here. So you can get access to individual courses by using these prices, or which, what most people end up doing is that they subscribe to, you know, like the monthly or the annual membership. When you do sign up for the annual membership, you end up saving $50. So that's kind of cool. And all of these courses, uh, I keep on adding new courses, keep on updating courses where I can. And this is this amazing resource. So check out, go to adamsharp.school for more details and definitely check out the workshops. All right, welcome back to the video. Now inside the tab function, what can we do? Well, the first thing we need is we need to find out the location of the tab and we can get that from our AR view. So first we're gonna go ahead and unwrap our AR view. We're gonna get the AR view and then we can go ahead and get the actual location. So I'm gonna say location, which is recognizer, dot location and location in the AR view. So this location will be a 2D location, meaning two dimensional location, which contains X and Y. And using this 2D location, we can find out that where your ray cast is intersecting. So let's go ahead and do that. Results equals to AR view dot ray cast. And you can see that ray cast does have a lot of different overload functions, like there's ray and then there's ray cast. Now, when we say, and when I mean overload function, I'm basically saying that uh, over here, not kind of overload, but uh, with different options, sorry, okay? So you can see from, well, from the location, allowing, and you can see allowing for the estimated plane, uh, existing plane geometry, or existing plane infinite. So these are different options that you can select. I usually go with, uh, you know, estimated plane, or you can say existing plane, in infinite plane, but I'm gonna go with estimated plane, whatever the plane is estimated when you find the plane. And the alignment of the plane will be horizontal because we are looking for planes that are like a table, tabletop, flat surfaces, you know, like the ground, you know, all of those things. So it's gonna give us some sort of a results and we're going to go ahead and get that first result. So results dot first, okay. Now, what do we do? Well, once we got the result, this result is actually based on the ray cast, which means that this result will have all the information uh, of the transform, of the scale, of the location, you know, all of those different things that the arview.raycast function is returning. And it will be based on finding the horizontal plane. So you will only get the result when you are looking through your iPhone and you tap and your tap goes, it creates a raycast and it goes and it intersects with a sofa or a couch or a table or the, you know, the floor. So all of those different things. So that is the only way that you're gonna get this particular results back from the arview.raycast function. Now, once you get this back, the remaining part is quite simple because we're gonna go ahead and create a mesh. Create a mesh. So what is this mesh? Well, this mesh is basically just kind of like a wireframe uh, or the skeleton of the thing that you're trying to create. So we are over here saying that we want to create a box, a cube basically of size 0 0.3 meters with a corner radius of 0 0.02. Uh, that might be too small of a radius, but think about it, it's in meters. So we just want the, the, the corners of the cube to be not like edges, but a little bit like rounded. And next we can go ahead and create the actual model. So we're gonna go ahead and say cube equals to model entity. We can pass in the mesh which will be a cube mesh and with a material. Now you can use any material you want over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and use simple material, orange, and with is metallic to be true, okay? The next thing is, well, 
what about the anchor? I mean, if I want to put this cube into the real world, it needs to be attached to an anchor, right? And the good news is that you can easily create an anchor. If we create an anchor, because we have most of the stuff, we'll go ahead and create with anchor entity. And in the anchor entity, you can see that we can pass in a lot of different things, including the ray cast result, which is great because we already have the ray cast result. So this means that this particular end anchor entity will be created based on the ray cast result that we are getting. And that ray cast result will already have the size, the location, the scale, the transform, everything. And using that, we can go ahead and create this anchor. Once we create this anchor, we can go ahead and add the cube to the anchor and the most important, adding the actual anchor to the scene. So scene.addAnchor and then anchor. And that's pretty much it. That's how you will perform ray casting in Reality Kid. All right. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to change this to iPad. Let's go ahead and run this on an iPad and we will see uh, that how it will work. But before we do that, one small thing, which is quite a big thing that we need to do is back in the make UI view, we're going to make sure that the context dot coordinator dot AR view is set as AR view. Because if we don't do that, then the coordinator will have no idea about the AR view. So make sure that you do that or else your application will not work. Now we can go ahead and run this application on our iPhone or iPad. So here we go. We are running the app. And as I tap and that tap intersects with the floor, you can see that I'll be able to add these virtual cubes. And I can even try it on the sofa. I mean, it has a flat surface, a horizontal plane. So I can go ahead and add some items over there also. So this is the ray casting using Reality Kit.